the touchline. Big things are happening this weekend. We have got the Kenya Cup going on, the Kenya Premier League going on. But now we take our focus to football here in the local circuit here in the country. Steve, are you joining us? Banas No, man. Yeah, how are you doing? Quite some time. I'm, yeah. I'm doing great. Uh -huh. Always a pleasure. The in, last time, in the, the last time, the last time I was with you was during <laughs> Mashemeji Derby, and you are rejoicing uh, Gurmaya's victory against FC Leopard. Not necessarily rejoicing. <laughs> I was very neutral. Your mood was sort of boring. I was very neutral. <laughs> <laughs> was it at halftime? They were leading 2 nil. so... Yeah. Yeah. But that was expected, of course, considering the awful show of FC Leopards, yeah, 12 time yeah, KPL champions, it was expected. Yeah, despite the fact that, you know, during most derbies, mm. anything can happen, but uh, Gormaya, owing to their record against yeah, their yeah, rivals, the it was book, anticipated. The was not, was not up, upset on mm -hmm. that day. Yeah. I think everyone expected um, Gormaya to win, probably even FC Leopards themselves. That's why probably there wasn't so much violence after that game, but that already happened. Let's focus on what we have on the <laughs> place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already a done deal. Yeah. yeah. Big things are happening here in the country. We've got our team actually now in camp preparations for the Africa Cup of Nations are on. And the big question is the coach has gone ahead to call some of the local based players, but there's a kid he has called who is called Buire from Sofa Parker. Four goals since he has joined Sofa Parker. He has got to have impressed the coach in the striking department. Yeah, I, I think I was uh I was actually really impressed by the, the squad that uh, Minya called. Yeah. Uh, you could see there was a lot of um, experience in youth, the likes of Buire, the likes yeah. of uh, David Owino from Madara United, mm -hmm. the likes of um, Farouk Shikalo, still a, a very young player, if you ask me, and a very good goalkeeper. Yes. And also, there was a lot of experience in that team, Kahata, Philemon uh, Otieno, who've been playing and helping Kenya even qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah. So, you know, generally looking at the squad, I think um, it was well balanced. Uh, that team is exciting. Obviously, the team will be training probably, the coach said, once yes. every, every month. Yeah. The, the, this team is uh, more of uh, being supplemented with the experienced players who are playing in Europe and mm. everything will be coming back. Mm. But looking ahead, because of the Chan tournament, and this team is majorly an assembly of local players who can play in the African Nations Cup, it looks to be a very good, knitted, young team that can, can actually do something in the Chan tournament. Yeah, if you look at all those players who've been called up, I think they've been some of the most impressive as far as, you know, the campaign in the uh, 2019 Kenyan Premier League is concerned. And like I said, um, you know, if you have youth and you have experience, that only bodes well for, for the team. Yes. And uh, for Minye, you know, given that uh, Chan is only for locally based players, I think we have the quality in the team. As far as, you know, if you look at the goalkeeping, even, you know, the defence and the midfield department, I think all those positions we have talked. Obviously, there, there's still a chance for the likes of uh, Nicolas Kipkure. Uh, in fact, in fact, look in. <laughs> yeah. in fact, Steve, I know you are a reputable football writer and you yeah. read so much and you follow even uh, the sentiments by uh, Kenyan football yeah. following. Immediately, that squad was released by Sebastian Minye. Yeah. Uh, I know it's provisional for Chan, a tournament meant for local best players. There was sort of criticism as far as some departments are concerned. The mm. goalkeeping uh, department, especially, you know, contributing players from same club, that's Karibangi Sharks and yeah. uh, probably one of the custodians Jumbo who's Jumbo not Jumbo been Jumbo who's, Jumbo. who's not been getting regular playing time, yeah. also earning an inclusion. Of course, several absentees whom you and I know that probably they ought and deserved an inclusion. Kenneth Muguna has been yeah. exceptional for Gurma Football yeah. Club yeah. since returning back to his former club. Dennis Oliech, of course, is yet to gain full match fitness, but uh, also several fans look forward to his inclusion. The likes of Sven Ida, Karyobangi Sharks, and even considering what those young tracks did during the Sportpesa Super Cup yeah. in Tanzania, yeah. Arizona, Mwendoa, oh, yeah. Duke, Abuya. So in as much as we might agree with the squad, but there is sort of a... Uh, uh, holes that are being but left but and but eyebrows that, one, that we can raise. But, but, but that one is actually under the discretion of the coach. Yeah. We might have good players all of, of them. Of course, his decision is final. But yeah, it's Definitely. It's and yeah. You, know, you know, you can't call in all the players. Yes. You can only call in a few. Mm -hmm. And every time you... I, I'm sure even if you would have called the likes of Oli, the likes of uh, Muguna, and the likes of Kip Curry, still people would have been like, okay, where is this guy, where is this guy? So that is always going to happen. Why do you call Why do you yeah. call this? <laughs> but I think mostly the debate has been uh, about the inclusion of, or rather the exclusion of Dennis Oliech. And for me, I actually agree with the coach. He needs, yes. to, he needs to work, you know, he needs to earn his spot in that uh, team. On merit. Yeah, on merit. We need to really look at merit. Obviously, is, you know, if you have somebody of Oliech's, uh, you know, Caliber. reputation in Caliber, you know, it brings a lot of into the team just besides, you know, being able to score goals. It brings you, that you know, personality and experience. I, I have a problem with people 
with a generation that grew up watching Dennis Olech. Yeah. They, they were that generation of, we are Dennis Olech. Yeah. They were like, people coming up, we are David Owino, yeah. uh, David, David's church. That's like my generation now. But there's this generation of people who went to school together with Dennis Olech. Mm. He breaks to the Sekafa team in 202. He's making all the wonders to Africa Cup of Nations. And people are happy. These are our player. This is the best player. Mm. But they are failing to move away from that. Dennis Olech is not actually as good as he was today. They are, if he is coming on to a dressing room, matters of football on the field should be a bit limited to the advice he can give, not to his body and his yeah. mind to give it on the field. Yeah. You, look you, you, like, you and I yeah. know that uh, form is temporary, class is permanent. Dennis Olech has been tremendous for the national team. He made his debut in 2003 <coughs> and of course he inspired the national team qualifications to African Cup of Nations in 2004 to tell age of Jacob Ghost. Since he's come back to local football, he's bagged, I think, too goals and the, the moment he's come on the pitch for Gourmet Football Club has been hilarious in terms of uh, his performance. But of course, uh, we all have to agree that Dennis Olegi's inclusion in the national team has to be on merit and yeah, deserving, yeah, yeah. but not really his name that we yeah, used to know really, in yes, the past. Yeah. But of course, yeah. Sebastian Minya probably must be giving him time before, mm -hmm. right now, as we speak, uh, in between, before the African Cup of Nations uh, get done in Egypt, uh, probably he will, the Frenchman will have uh, already decided on whether he will call him. But experience is also key in as much as uh, we might also there's, be... There's still time. There's there is still, still time. time. To work uh, his way yeah. into the squad. Let, let me not but as we speak you. right now, I think it's a bit... Let let sure. me not yes. lie to you. As I'm speaking now, I've got many people will be saying, what is that guy saying? That guy does not want Olech in the national team. Mm -hmm. And everybody will be saying Olech should earn that because of merit. And I can tell you for free, no matter how Dennis Olech works from now to June, or to the selection of the team going to camp, mm -hmm. there are better placed players who will work extra hard to earn that chance to be in the national team. Definitely, I have and to agree with you that player selection uh, is not supposed to be compromised, is not supposed to be interfered with with the haunters of football in the but country. Now, the coach should be left this, to do his work independently. You realize this conversation is not even with Dennis Olech. It's not even with the national team. Mm. It is with the fans, with people, majorly many journalists out here actually saying Dennis Olech needs to be in the national team. It is not about Dennis Olech saying I'm good enough to be in the national team. But of course, that's a conversation that <laughs> probably will give this, this will never end. Let's in our subsequent <laughs> programs, we can proceed. But overall, I think we agree yeah. with the squad that was named by Frenchman Sebastian yeah. Minya for Chan. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is blend of youth and experience, as Steve said. And when professional players led by the captain, Victor Wanyama, join the camp, I think mm -hmm. that blend will be something that uh, is needed. One, one question that came out was, we mm -hmm. are in the tropics. We are sending our team to play, to train in a camp in France, mm -hmm. or it has it not been decided yet? and we'll be playing in Egypt, which is a bit of an arid country. Yeah. How will that impact the players? I think players for, for that, I think the trip is just uh, for the sake of, you know, feel-good factor, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of these players are really young. Their sp passports are not all that stamped, yeah. you know. So the moment you I get that trip going to, to France... Really it's motivation. Yeah, yeah, it will motivate me. I'll work extra hard so that, you know, when that trip comes where we need to go to Egypt, then I'll be in the reckoning. Yeah. So for me, I think also it's quite some, some, some time before we go to Egypt. Yeah. And uh, the weather here in Kenya is not so different. It's not as hot as it is in, in, in Egypt. So it's just a training camp. They'll probably go there for, for a week. If they get the funds, it's not a, a yeah. grand deal. And come back and for you me, for me, for, for me, what, what I'm, what I'm think, what I think, and everything that is going to happen is, mm. let's not put pressure on the team that you need to go to the Africa Cup of Nations and perform. You have been out in the cold for 15 years. Just make Africa Cup of Nations, make another Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah. In that, from now on. Let it be known that Arambe Stars is a mainstay yeah. in the Africa Cup of Nations. We are not going to move away from the Africa Cup of Nations. If we make it to four tournaments in the Africa Cup of Nations, now we'll be saying 
we need that semi-final mm. spot. And I think there's every chance that, yeah. uh, you know, Harambe Stars can become a regular. Yeah. Also aided mm. by the fact that CAF decided to increase the number of teams mm. that participate in that competition. Yes. Obviously, it doesn't board in well for us when we say we can only participate because the number of teams have been increased. That means we are not competitive enough. Yes. But it's already there. Even yeah. the World Cup is going to be uh, extended uh, yeah. to, is it 48, 48 teams? Yes. teams? Yeah, that is massive. So we should actually look at, like, I agree with you, we should yeah. look at Africa yeah. Cup of Nations. We should be a mainstay. Yeah. in that competition, like the likes of Nigeria, the likes of Ivory Coast. Yeah. Then now, the moment we become, you know, an African powerhouse, then now getting to the World Cup becomes ever, ever so easy because we are used to competing yes. and actually winning uh, competition. Because remember the last time we were in, in AFCON, 2004? Yes. We lost 3-1 to Mali, we lost 3-0 to Senegal. Then yeah. we, we beat Burkina Faso 3-0 during, during the last group tie. And Emmanuel Ake and Baraza scoring. I, so and remember, that is the only game we have won in the AFCON. Yeah in the five times that we have been to the AFCON. That's mm. the only game. So it tells you, AFCON is not ours. Mm. We are not ready for <laughs> such but, a but, tournament. But, but uh, mm. just a contrary opinion. You know, Kenya, as far as footballing is concerned, is not Madagascar that are qualifying for the first time, and yeah. probably that will be a platform for them to get exposed and you know uh, noticed as they look forward qualifying, uh, going forward. Kenya is a football heavyweight. I know mm. in terms of profile, in terms of pedigree, we might not be compared to the likes of Intomitable Lions of Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Super Eagles of Nigeria, but Kenya has also, you know, bragged of positive headlines, football-wise considering we've also contributed to uh, our immense talent playing in professional football, and, and we are known globally. So, in as much as <laughs> <laughs> we, we might not go there to, to win, but <laughs> we have to I think give are, our all yeah. and deliver, because considering Mark, that this will be a proper build-up to 2022 World Cup, I I remember interviewing Nick Mwenda when he was campaigning and he said that his key target will be to help the national team qualify to 2022 20, World Cup in Qatar. And let me tell before you. we qualify, we need also to sparkle at continental stage. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you. Yes. Steve, Steve can bear it with me and I can say it here without fear of contradiction. Kenya is not a big team in football. No. Kenya is not a big country in football. <laughs> and a, people need to take that to the bank and let no one lie to people that Kenya is a But you see even the yardstick, the yardstick, uh, the yardstick no, no, to rate there's, there's, how good a team there's, is, there's is relative. There's shortcuts that we have and majorly, I'm one of them, uh, we journalists are culprits. We put pressure on people, we put stories outside there, pushing Kenya to be a team that is good in football. When you know to the fiber of our human bonds, we are not a good country in football all the way from the grassroots level to the national level. It's just that we have got these shortcuts. We have got a league. It has to be played. We have got a national second league. That's, that's where yeah. my point was, was coming from. Yeah. Uh, if you look at our local league in itself, yeah. uh, the, the teams that frequent uh, continental football, yeah. even European football, uh, Euro European championships, and even the World Cup, you have to look at their, their, their leagues. Very strong, very strong. So I think that is where we need to start working on. And um, CAF released, um, you know, the progress of teams as far as, you know, continental um, league football is concerned. Yes. And Gormahia are number 26 right now in Africa. Yes. They've moved, uh, I think, from number 43 the last time uh, those ratings were released. So I think we are making... Which means Kenyan football is getting progressive. Yeah, we are yes. getting there. But now we need another Gormahia. Yeah. Yeah, we need another Gormahia in there. A team that can go out there and, you know, be, uh, you know... Uh, do what? What's be, a mainstay be a mainstay in the in, Champions, in Cup Cha Cup Champions League and Confederation Cup. Cups. Yeah. We saw Karibangi Sharks went. Yeah. They didn't do so well. They just went via the pre preliminary round. They were out. We've seen the same with Sofapaka. Mm -hmm. We've seen the same with the FC Leopards. We've seen the same with Ulinzi. We've yes. seen the same with Ulinzi yeah. Stars. So we really need to work on our, on, on our league right now. Because even if you look at the Kenyan Premier League right yes. now, Bandari look like they're getting, they're getting there. This is a team that has never really even won the, the Kenyan Premier League. The, I think the yes. best they've done maybe was last season, finishing third. Yeah. You look at AFC Leopard, they've, they've, they've fell off. Now, you'd be, if you want to find AFC Leopards, you have to go like really down. <laughs> so, Papaka are very inconsistent. Madare very so inconsistent. Yes. So, the moment Gormahi actually start playing so well, then they the league is pretty much guaranteed. So, so we the, need most, to have the, some most, the most the most important thing is putting in place proper systems, proper exactly. structures in yes. Machinana at the grassroots. I yes. understand there's plenty of potential and you have to have, you know, continuity uh, program so that when Dennis Oliech is exiting the stage, we're not struggling, yes. another so we're not like struggling like to now, get, yeah. you know, the, the way we are talking about, uh, and I'm sorry we are taking this conversation too far, the way we are talking about now the national team and everything. One 
thing that the Federation has done and is good is their center of excellence. The only problem is it's a one area, it's a one school structured mm -hmm. center of excellence. If that center of excellence with the curriculum that they have be replicated in the whole country, then we start seeing those results from the whole country. Those kids in primary school, the way they are getting on to secondary school level, their progress from secondary school level to college level, from there to professional playing, then we'll be starting having many, many players coming up, young players who are good enough mm -hmm. to play in the national team, to play in our national league system. But I think as far as um, you know, youth structures are concerned, I think what the Federation have done, mm -hmm. they've let corporates run this um, you know, the youth systems. Yes. We used to have the Copa Coca Cola tournament. Mm -hmm. We barely hear about it these days. Mm -hmm. We have the Safari Coma, uh, Sakata. Chapadimba. Chapadimba. Yeah, yes. It was used to. Was Sakata. Sakata, yeah. The yeah. Right now it's Chapadimba, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they've left it corporate. So my only question is how much say does the Federation have it on, on that? Yes. Is it just a case of, you know, this, this student. Sanctioning the league? Yeah, this student having out. that opportunity to, you know, play in that uh, tournament, then go out, out of Kenya, go for, you know, the continental game then maybe two or three are picked they go outside then we never hear of them and i think i think True. i think i think it's prudent you've brought in the question of corporate involvement mm. in supporting sporting activities in the country some uh, we've had saying that you know it's sort of pr exercise and probably those corporates are not after you know developing uh, football but mm. it's their own mileage publicity and marketing i remember you were in charge of some corporate in 2014 yeah. prior to yeah. uh, fifa 2014 was, world cup and you were facilitating some kid program, Lloyd Kim, yeah. to travel to brazil it to was a good program because if i can actually just mention to you a couple of players who graduated from that tournament yes uh, we have eugene mukangula afc leopards yes. right now from thika united yeah we have um christopher Ruchum, also afc leopards we have um Mukholwe, the goalkeeper at wazito fc we have harun nyaha at Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can count actually a whole first 11 who graduated from that tournament, and that was under 17. Yes. This is a team that you can actually find most of these players are playing in the top flight or in the National Super League, which m makes me ask myself, what if somebody would have taken up that whole team, the way they left South Africa for that um, uh -huh. continental football yes. and came back to Kenya? And still what remain together. Yeah, yeah, if they could have remained together. Yeah. That team would have been now the mainstay of the under-23 team right now because they are quite young lads. And that team would have been uh, having that ability to actually beat, you know, even qualify for the under-23 Africa Cup of Nations. But that is what I was saying about corporate involvement. The moment they go out, they come back, everyone just goes their way. It, it's over, it's done for Let's them. finish it right there and we we'll go on and talk about Golmaya preparing for their continental assignment against Hussein Day. Golmaya traveled to Angola and came back and left the group open. Yeah. And today, they are going to play, when they are going to play Hussein Day, it is now a win-win situation for Golmaya. How tough is it for Golmaya now in this group? It's quite tough for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Hussein Day are the ones who are leading that, um, that group with four points. Uh, four points and meaning that they went to Zamalek in Egypt. Yes. It's not so easy going to North Africa and getting points. They went there and forced uh, Zamalek to a 1-1 one -one draw. You know, as much as God beat uh, Zamalek here 4 2, Zamalek is one of those big teams yes. actually. They've even won the Champions League, uh, the, the CAF Champions League. And also, they beat Petro at, uh, Atletico 2 1 at yes. home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gorma here lost to Petro Atletico 2 1 uh, in Luanda, right? So, you know, they are facing a team who I think um, they might have been just in the reckoning as far as, you know, who's going to top this group is concerned because you have to look, you don't have to look past Zamalek as much as they're yes. struggling right now. Mm -hmm. But Hussein Day are coming out as, you know, the team to beat so far in Gormahia mm -hmm. have to be quite careful. Well, a big one for Gormahia there. But prior they, to this particular time, we've seen sort of mind games from Hussein Day. They have refused to train at the poster ground saying that the facility is substandard. And we've seen such lamentations before complaints from mm -hmm. African teams. Asante Kotoko, when they were about to play Karibank Sharks in CAF, Confederations Cup, they complained but, about but, the treatment, but, the bus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how justified uh, their concerns, grievances are, or is it sort of, you know, psychological tricks no, no, to, no, no, no. to it's try to stabilize it the opponent? Not psychological. <laughs> you look at the training ground for Hussein Day back in Algeria. Then compared to the poster grounds that you are taking the right now. But you can compare the facilities in North Africa with what we have here. Yeah, yeah. that's the whole point. Yeah. And that, th that's, why, that's the reason as to why they have to, to agree with what they are being given. Because look at, we look don't at have this. what they have in look their own yeah. home. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they look have to this. make do with what you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look at this. It is. It is. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't deny that. You have to make do with the, what you have. Yeah. You, you see that. But 
sports is moving into a way you look at like the English Premier League mm -hmm. where they say you cannot have a team come to the onto the English Premier League if it does not have a natural grass playing field you realize that mm -hmm. so we might be getting into a situation where with the calf rules and everything that is coming in place we have got calf saying Gormai can qualify for the calf Champions League but if you don't have the best field for these other teams to come you're off the competition so competition alone is not enough. I think play, playing yeah. facility and training facility are two different things. Sure. Yeah. Uh, if you're talking about playing facility, I think we can host any team at the Machakos grounds. We can host yeah. any team in Bukungu. We can host any team uh, even in, in Kericho. I yes. love that stadium, the Kericho Green Stadium. Yeah. And obviously we have Kasarani over here. And Nyayo is also getting um, ready. Yeah. So as far as uh, I think the playing facility is concerned, and that should be CAF's main um, bone of contention, I think we have that. Yeah. As far as training is concerned now, um, I'm sure even Gore, uh, there's a, uh, was it last season when they went to, to Nigeria? Yes. And they also complained of mistreatment. So it seems like it's just something that is in it, in, in us, Af Africans. You mm -hmm. come here, it's all psychological um, mind games. You come here, we sort of just try to find that edge. And it happens world over. You remember Liverpool when they were playing, uh, was it West Ham? Yeah, in the, in the, in the Premier League recently, that yeah. game that ended 1-1. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at halftime, the groundsmen, I uh, decided <laughs> to clear the ice on the side that Liverpool were attacking yeah. <laughs> and left the ice on the side that West Ham were attacking just yeah. to make the game ever so difficult. So yeah. these things happen in, uh -huh. in football. Yeah. And if Usende have refused to train, mm -hmm. that's, that's their own fault. They, they, they love to they play, 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 yeah. the, the play against uh, yeah. Gormahia today trained yeah. Um, yeah. at uh, KSMS. But Gormahia heading into this, uh, Gormahia okay. heading into this particular time with, yeah. with uh, you know, allegations of unpaid dues and salaries to several players and confirmed reports indicate that Denis Oliech yeah. uh, might not feature in that particular tie because of you know violation of uh, his contractual agreement with his team and also suspensions I don't know that would would also affect the team's performance of course they need victory to go to the top of yeah, the table the and they're getting separated two of them <laughs> with one point so it's a, it's a big game, it's a big you game. Know, with this OLH issue and payment, I'm yeah. actually caught between two worlds. <laughs> yeah. um, the first world is that, yes, it needs to be paid, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. Rendering services it's due contract, team. yeah. yeah. You, yeah work, you, you, signed a contract. you work, you earn your money. You work, you earn your money. Yes. Then the other thing tells me, mm. this is somebody who has not been on the pitch for quite some time. Yes, so he should not come in here. <laughs> <laughs> he should be so hungry, you know. He, he needs to... I want to play this much. I want to play this much. At the expense of his remuneration, welfare, I'm not it should be a long pitch delivery. I don't think it's, um, he's not been paid 100%. I think it's just part of the deals. Because yes. from what I, I've read, he went to his bank and found there was only like 100,000 in, in the account. I don't know how much he's paid um, <laughs> every month. Obviously, it's a lot of money. Yes. Mm, but can't that sustain him at least for <laughs> the next few <laughs> few you know days as i'm sure that it's, it's something that um, you know the executive are yes. working on i don't think they're just you know sleeping there and, uh, and and saying we have this money they're holding it back they want to pay him so for me as far as he is concerned mm -hmm. and if you want to continue saying that Oliet should be called for chan and all that mm -hmm. and being such an experienced player being such a player with the you know uh, with a big head in terms of you know just having played the game for so long and having experienced so much I think Actually, for him right now, it should just be hunger. should just yes. be hunger. I just want to play. I just yes. want to gain that fitness. I want to dislocate um, to Isenga as the number one uh, striker, striker in Gorma here. Because yes. if you look at the club right now, he's behind probably even Nicolas Kipkuru. Kip yes. On the order. picking order. Yeah, so mm. for me, I think it's just that hunger. But obviously now also the human heart says, man, you can't play in an empty stomach. So Definitely. I'm quoting those But two we've, we've, had, we've had these problems <laughs> before. I remember uh, a player who left Gourmet to join Kaiser Chiefs of South Africa, yeah, that is left by Godfrey. Yeah. Well, you see, prior to their continental uh, uh, tie against, mm. I think, Super Sport United, yeah. there was controversy surrounding uh, lack of payment mm. of salaries and mm. their dues and allowances as well. And that even led into his failure to board that mm. plane to head to South Africa for mm. that particular tie. Mm. I don't know, what's the long-term solution that uh, uh, should be put in place so that these issues going forward can be addressed? Because prior to, you know, a sensitive game, then mm. these problems are arising. I think besides just obviously addressing the, the backroom issues, as far as management is concerned, there's also the issue of making our clubs attractive to corporate involvement. You know, we need more sport pesas to come into the game. You know, no, a one. club like Gorma here, yeah. you need to be having, um, you know, a sponsor. Probably even we've seen uh, some some clubs even 
in the English Premier League, all yes. clubs have you know a sleeve sponsor and all that. I think on my have one. I I, I uh, remember I think uh, the, the game in Machakos last mm. year. I, it was Gormai against Esperance. Mm. And the conversation was, look at how many sponsors Esperance mm. had on their whole team. They had mm. two sponsors on the front. They had a different sponsor on the back side. Mm. They had a slave sponsor and they had a short sponsor. You realize that? Mm. And it was a big deal for them because mm. all the sponsors wanted coverage and the game had to be streamed for them because that's what they do. Mm. But corporate and financial discipline and all the clubs is where we'll finish that conversation. A big conversation will be going on with Odd, but we cannot finish. Now let's go on to one of the biggest matches that will be happening this afternoon, will be Madara United versus FC Leopards. But before we discuss the key match that will be going to happen, Francis Kimanze seems to have got his groove back. Now he has won three times the Kenya Premier League Coach of the Month, mm. and this month of February, January, he was the one who was awarded the gong. He seems to be, he's back now. Um, yeah, he was back in January. Yes. Um, right now, if you look at where Madara United are, they are third in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, for Madare, what has happened uh, over time, they don't lose so many matches, yes. but Madare always draw. Mm -hmm. The last two seasons, they drew 15 matches, 15 out of 30, yes. then 15 out of 34. Mm -hmm. As we speak right now, they've already drawn five matches. Mm -hmm. So they need to just remove that thing out of the equation. So look, at Tottenham. Yeah, look at Tottenham. Either we win, or we lose. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in between. Yeah. But for Madare, it's always been draws, it's always been draws. And that's why they've actually even fallen on the table, having started so well. Yes. They were top of the league, I think, for the first maybe 10 rounds, and they're uh -huh. playing some lovely football. That's why the likes of Royal Cal have, have been called to the national team. For yes. me, I don't think there's a midfielder who's been so good as far as his job is concerned, like Roy. Yes. In that midfield, I've watched him, and it's just it's been a joy to watch this yeah. season. So for Madare United, I think they just need to find a way of winning. You know, obviously they don't want to lose. Obviously a point is better than none. Yes. But it's just the draws, the draws. Because I'm talking of 15 last season. I'm <laughs> talking of yes. 15 the, the season the previous before. season. Yeah. But um, for, for Kimanzi um, winning the gong in January, um, I think he deserved it, obviously. Yes. He beat the likes of um, Mwalala to the gong, of yes. um, Bandari and mm -hmm. Okte of Gormahia. So he deserved it. But um, as far as the league table is concerned, I think it's just a case of saying the honey. Yeah, let's I listen in to uh, uh, Kimanzi himself talk about winning the log, and then we'll go on with this conversation. We have the motivation because we have um, uh, up to now a good run and a good record. So I think if we can improve it, you know, in the round 10 and 11 rounds, I think it will be better. Every team wants to work for a better um, environment. And if we have a, um, an environment that we feel that we are happy, we are, we are, we are, we are safe as, as, as a group, and we are enjoying what we are doing. What is important for me is that at least every player, one of every offensive player is able to show that he can manage to score. The distribution among the, the 18 goals that we have scored shows there's no dominance in one player. That means they are, they are, they are more, more their mobility it is good and uh, I think they are sharp as, of, as, as the offensive players of my team so it's good when you don't only rely on one but you have a collective uh, responsibility. I think every single player that I've got here is very impressive because uh, Juma is also a youngster who spent two years already under study in Jojo Wino and now he has come out and is doing something very 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 positive and it shows that he has been learning something and is ready to take the challenge but we know David the same so the youngsters who are all, always, you know, I believe it's a, it's a journey, it's a story of a small journey with youngsters who are trying to establish themselves. And they are doing it, and they're doing it inside. Francis Kimanzi there after winning the Kenya Premier League Coach of the Month. He had four draws, no, sorry for that, four wins and two draws. He defeated the likes of... Uh, Bernard Mualala of Bandar who is actually at the top of the table and one match that will be happening there today will be Bandari versus Nzoya Sugar at Mbaraki Stadium it is a direct win for Mualala because now he's welcoming Muyoti yeah. back into the deep end back into the deep waters of Kenyan football how do you think that match will go? Um, Nzoya last season um, after obviously Malala left Zoya for Bandari. They went to Bandari and they were beaten. Yes. I don't see that changing today. I think Bandari are just, um, they, they found a winning formula. I think everything is working. Uh -huh. That defense is really, 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 really strong. Yes. You know, with, um, you know, uh, the, the goalkeeper. 
Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, he doesn't yes. like conceding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Feli Mulumba in there, and you know, Major also as, as a fullback. I think mm -hmm. that's one player that you should know, really Bandari, have a look at. They, they made a case in the second leg of last season. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I think they covered, I think, seven points to capture Gormay and finish second in mm -hmm. the log, mm -hmm. and also conceding only one or two goals. Mm -hmm. And people were like, this Feri Mulumba, Farouk Shikalo kind of defense is really what Bandari needed, mm -hmm. and they made that case. <laughs> and this season... And they added, they added Bernardo Diamba to that defense. To that defense. Yeah. So it tells you, they have got a tough team to beat. Yeah, I think uh, how they finished the season um, last season was really strong. Mm -hmm. And guys were like, probably this is just a look, uh, fluke end of season uh, momentum yes. but that's something they picked up they brought it into this season and you know they're lead, not leading that table by chance i think they uh -huh. they are the team because as Too far much. as you know they are concerned yes. they are quite consistent they yeah. are not like the bandaris uh, i mean the, the mandaris and the karyobangi sharks yes. that, those are i think some of the two most inconsistent teams <laughs> in the league <laughs> <laughs> and by the way to, 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 talking about madara united the slum boys i think yeah. they need to replicate what they did a few years ago in 2008 when they won Kenya Premiership title. Of course, Madara United, as far as local football is concerned, can be compared to the likes of Southampton, Monaco, yeah. I think Kenyan version of those teams. One because we've seen, we've, seen, <laughs> we've seen them, we've seen the team, you know, uh, getting raided in terms of when the teams that brag of financial muscles mm. want uh, great players going to, Cario to Madara United, going to Zoya Football Club to get mm. the top talent outside there. But of course, uh, Francis Kimanzi, the former Rampe Stars tactician, has been has been outstanding, and the likes of Cliff Nyakea yeah. also, who I think also deserve probably being in the national team. Rampe Stars mm. has been quite tremendous, mm. despite the loss of that experienced defender was, you know, uh, associated with match fixing. Mm. Uh, there has been a gap in George the defense, but Madara United can probably. I think one thing I like with Francis Kimanzi is he doesn't go for quick fixes. Mm. He tries to mold that team. Remember the team that made it to the 2004 Africa Cup of Nations had seven Madara United players. And those seven were the key players to help Madara win the 2008 Kenya Premier League title. Mm. And you realize since the last three seasons, the, the other season, Madara was on their way down. Mm. Come up last season, Madara worked their way up. And with Francis Kimanzi coming on to add some experienced players, he brought the likes of Aluanga. Even James Aluanga, Situma is Situma back to join. on the so fold. He works on with the youth and the blend to bring them up. And let's not deny it, other teams with money obviously will be coming for this kind of players. Look mm. at Harrison Mwendo. Mwendo broke out in Madare. We saw him breaking out mm. with Madare. And Karubangi came. Mboya, the goalkeeper. The moment he broke out and is very good enough, Tasker is here. Mm. We need you. So. He doesn't like the quick fixes, but he's trying his best to make the team there. And we are, go we are finishing out. I've been told to wind up as we are going on to the next segment. But I could not leave Ayo here mm. without talking about FC Leopards. Quickly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Quickly. Um, <laughs> that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about us. FC Leopards. I'll yeah. just say one word. Yeah. Sad. Sad. It's quite mm. sad what's happening at that club. Because you look at the team itself, in terms of the players they have, those, 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 those kids can beat any team yes. in the country and beyond. I just don't know what's happening. Mm. I don't know what's happening. They're obviously, we, we blame the management and all that, because if you've seen over time, whenever the office or the backroom um, office is not stable, then results are always affected on the yes. pitch. You've seen it with the likes of Leeds United. We are seeing it currently with Newcastle. Liverpool were almost yes. in trouble uh, them days when you know the likes of Hicks and Gillette were, were in charge of that club. So. I think that in, in itself is really affecting the club, but also I don't know what's happening with the players. They don't seem motivated because you, if you look at this, these players, most of them have actually moved into the club. And moving into FC Leopards, a club that has a sponsor means that probably your salary packs are going to be up there. So why don't your you just bonuses put in... Are there yeah. every week. Why are you not training, putting in the effort on the pitch? I, I don't know what's happening because these, these players are really good. I was yeah. talking to one of the defenders for FC Leopards, Dan Sheetu, and he says that amongst the experienced players, the most influential players at, at the den, of course, himself included alongside Waivon, Isuza mm -hmm. and Captain Robinson Kamura, who the other day, I think a few weeks ago, uh, 
was uh, uh, quoted out of context I don't know yeah. or that's yeah, what he said it. <laughs> because he, the fans of FC Leopards are referring to his comments as reckless when he said that they yeah. don't have any standout striker who can yeah. score goals mm -hmm. because they are struggling in the attacking department something that uh, I'm in agreement with but FC Leopards they need to do a favor to their legends look at the players who played for the team before mm -hmm. the likes of JJ Masiga Dan Shikanda you know now the actual the legends are out now they are making a case that this mm. office has to go and one of the major case case that is coming out is the office everybody in that office is an agent the of course as we speak agent. right yeah, now that is the main the, case the, that is coming there, out there came on board a rescue a rescue committee led by Morris Amawa Mombasa, a a prominent business yeah. man and of course Dan Shikanda deputizing mm. him and they said that uh, one of their key mandate key priorities to rescue the team and restore its lost glory because they are citing reasons but that But that is what everyone who comes in that's you know, a line, everyone I who does a, a, a coup in AFC Leopards normally say <laughs> we are coming to rescue the team we are yeah. coming to rescue the team they all say that Let, let's they all say that, that. We, Steve you and I will agree that I think during the hey days of one uh, former Nairobi County Speaker, Ole Magel. Alex Olemagelo, yeah. the team tried. The team did well. Well, maybe we need to have the likes of Osoro <laughs> sharing. Th those <laughs> are the problems that <laughs> the executive committee at FC <laughs> Leopards. And let's hope that everything can change at the FC Leopards then and we can have them back to where they belong in the Kenya Premier League. Big matches at the Kenya Premier League this afternoon will be Poster Rangers versus Olenze Stars. We'll be having Bandari versus Nzoia. That's a game to watch. Chemelil versus KCB will be on. Then Kakamega Homeboys will be playing Sofa Paka. Madare United will be playing FC Leopards to finish up this match day today on Saturday. I didn't know you're a big basketball fan. You know when we were playing the NBA All Star game is yeah. when you talked and I was like, Hey, Kumbe, basketball is also your game. Man, I'm, I'm a sports guy. You know, I'm not yeah. a football guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I watched yeah. the NBA All Stars yeah. game, yeah. man. It was. Awesome, man. Yeah. I, I loved it. You, you gotta have enjoyed the dunks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and the three pointers, you know, they were missing like yes. they were missing one in ten. Like yeah. every time <laughs> Steph Curry goes up, it's Compared in. To what every time LeBron, LeBron even uh, Dick no Novitsky, he came in and he was moving around. like I don't know, he has an injury or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Slam dunk competition from the NBA All Star game. When we come back, we'll be all about the fan zone.